Hey everyone, Michael O'Brien here, and today we're going to be talking about five rookie mistakes that magicians make and how to avoid them. Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking out this video. Before I jump into it, I just wanted to let you know I'm going to be offering a free PDF and audiobook copy of my booklet, how to Magish, the Beginner's Guide to Becoming a Professional Magician. If you guys would like to get your hands on this and learn even more in-depth advice from magicians, please visit obrienmagic.com slash sign up. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. You're going to get the audiobook as well as the PDF 100% for free just for signing up for the newsletter. Thank you so much for checking this out and thank you so much again for all of the support. I really hope that you guys are enjoying these videos. If you're new to the channel, make sure to click the subscribe button because a lot more of this content is going to be coming out every single day, every single week, every month, every year, forever. Okay, maybe not forever, but for a while. So let's go ahead and move right along here in this video. I wanted to talk about five rookie mistakes that magicians make. Now, this video mostly pertains to magicians that are just getting started. But having said that, I have seen a lot of magicians who have been in the game for a while make a lot of these same mistakes. So these... Pieces of advice might be pertaining to some of you veterans as well. Uh, number one is performing magic without practicing it. Now, magicians will learn a piece of magic, try it a couple times just so that they can, you know, at least somewhat memorize the, the way that the moves work and everything like that. And then they will go out and try to perform it. I see this all the time. It doesn't matter how difficult the routine is. It could be a self-working piece of magic. The magician will learn the trick not really practice it, and then try to perform it for people the next day. Uh, you'll see them stumbling through the routine, or maybe they don't quite remember which order things are in. And even sometimes you'll see magicians where, you know, halfway through the trick, you're like, whoa, whoa, wait, hold on a second. And then they have to kind of go reset because they're not quite sure. Maybe they made a mistake, and they're trying to take a couple steps back to fix the mistake. And by then, the whole thing is like falling apart. The easiest way to avoid this is simply to practice. Now, not only can you practice, you, make, you have to make sure that you practice correctly. Now, I'll leave another link in the description right below to another video that I did called uh, How to Practice Properly. This is going to teach you uh, three steps that are going to help you to be able to practice the correct way. Because as they say, not only does practice make perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. So make sure you guys check out that video. The second thing that magicians do is they will try to perform slights that are above their skill level. So kind of similar to number one, this is uh, magicians performing slights that they haven't been able to perfect yet, usually slights that are very difficult. So for example, uh, let's just say I can perform an ambitious card routine. I could perform it pretty well using basic moves, double lift, double undercut, things like that, correct? Then I learn the diagonal palm shift. I'm so excited to show off that I can learn this new move that's super difficult and I'm going to add this move right into my routine. But then what happens is rather than making the routine better, I actually end up damaging the routine because now I'm adding a move in that I'm not very good at, I haven't put in the time to learn, and it's just very difficult and looks very awkward. So make sure that you're performing moves that are within your skill level. And of course, if the move is outside of your skill level, Again, you need to make sure that you're practicing it. It's not a terrible thing to perform easy slights. In my ambitious card routine, I perform a tilt, uh, a double lift, and a top change. Those are like the only slights that I perform in my ambitious card routine. You don't need to know the most difficult sleight of hand just to be able to prove to your magician friends that you are a good magician. Because if you're, especially if you're performing for layman, they're not going to know the difference whether or not it's difficult or not. All they're going to know is, hmm, that didn't look right. I think I saw you do something there. So that's number two, not to practice moves above your skill level. Number three, we have a tendency to imitate other magicians, especially magicians that we look up to. When uh, we're first learning magic routines, we'll try to be the magician that we are you know, learning from. Here is a perfect example. When I first started learning coin magic, one of my major influences was David Stone. 
when I would be performing coin magic, specifically routines that I learned directly from David Stone, I would start to mimic his cadence, the way that he spoke. Now, I'm not saying I would speak in a French accent necessarily, but I would mimic the way he said things. Like so, for example, I'm going to go ahead and take the little coin. Have you seen it? I'm going to place it right into the hand and then the coin vanish. But it just turns invisible. Have you seen it? Into a little invisible ball until it returns. People would be like, why is his voice changing? To me, I knew that I was being David Stone, but to the lay audience, they're just like, and that was really weird because his voice just changed randomly in the middle of the routine. So again, although we want to, you know, be just like some of the magicians that we look up to, you want to do your best to be your own performer. And if you don't know who your own character is yet and haven't discovered who you are yet, that's totally fine. Keep performing and I promise you'll settle into that character. The easiest way to be yourself during a performance is to draw from outside influence things that you really like. So maybe if you're a Harry Potter fan, add some kind of a Harry Potter theme to one of your tricks. Me personally, I love Doctor Who and I love Pokemon, right? So I have Doctor Who influence in some of my routines, some Pokemon routines. Uh, I love my wife and my daughter. I talk a lot about my wife and my daughter during my act. Draw from things that you're passionate about outside of magic and inject them into your performance. Number four is taking gigs or booking shows without having a routine put together. This one drives me the most crazy and this is the one that I probably see the most often online. If you're on any of these forums or Facebook groups or anything like that, you've probably seen that magician that says, hey guys, I have a gig coming up next Saturday. What routines should I perform for it? If you don't already have an idea and an actual routine put together, you should not be taking a gig. Doesn't matter if it's a talent show or if it's a, a, especially if it's a paid gig. If someone is paying you to come and entertain them, you should not at the last minute be trying to put a show together. Just isn't gonna work, okay? So again, it's very, very important that you have an actual act put together so that you are not scrambling at the last second to try to get something to perform for people. And the fifth thing that you guys should avoid, the fifth rookie mistake, and this is a weird one, so sit, sit with me for a minute, is not to challenge your audience. Now when I say not to challenge your audience, all I'm saying is not to have this kind of me versus them mindset. A lot of times, especially when we first start out, we want to prove that we're smarter, that we're better, and that we're gonna fool the pants off of everybody. Now you want to avoid being in this mindset because what's gonna happen is you're gonna kind of create this me versus them mentality, and what's gonna happen is your spectators they're gonna to start to heckle you. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the term heckler, all a heckler is is someone that's not interested in being a part of the show, or in many cases actually wants to kind of trip the performer up. And oftentimes I've noticed when we have hecklers, it's usually because they feel like their ego is being hurt, or their masculinity is being challenged, or whatever, and they're gonna to try to one-up the performer. Now I've already done two other videos on this subject. Again, I'll leave some links in the description below. I suggest you guys go check them out. The first one is called How to Deal with Hecklers. This is just how to deal with hecklers in general. The second one is how to deal with hecklers, but this is hecklers that are people that you know, your family, your friends, classmates, if you're a student, etc. It's a little bit of a different dynamic, but I don't wanna to talk too much about it in this video because I wanna keep this video as short as possible. So I really encourage you guys check those videos out as well. Feel free to open some new tabs if you need to so that you guys can get all of, all of this information so that you guys can uh, you know, learn from some of my mistakes and avoid some of these things early on. But the last piece of advice I'm gonna give you guys in this video here is to 
bring your audience along on a journey with you. So what do I mean by that? Rather than challenging them, make them a part of your performance. So for example, let's just say I'm performing an ambitious card routine. Rather than saying, I'm gonna go ahead and take your card, put it into the middle of the deck, nothing fishy to see. In fact, I'll even give them a shuffle. Notice that your card is not on the top and you're not even gonna see the moment that I snap and jumps to the top. Now what you're doing there subconsciously is setting up this, I'm gonna do something cool and I bet you're not gonna be able to see it moment, which is gonna kind of make them focus in on what you're doing rather than enjoying the performance. So instead, try something like this. So I wanna try something interesting with your card. We're gonna place it into the deck and give it a shuffle. In fact, would you mind to, to help me out with this? So I'm gonna need your hands, okay? because you are gonna do the magical move, which looks like this. Looks pretty cool, right? You go ahead and do the move. Wow, that was really good. In fact, when you do that move, it brings your card right up to the top. So what I've just done there is rather than saying, hey, I'm gonna do something cool that you're not gonna be able to figure out, I said, hey, do you wanna come do something cool with me? So what that's doing is not only giving them some reason to be interested in what's going to happen because they're going to be the one doing it but it also kind of makes them feel special it makes them feel important it's not uh oh i just got to sit here and watch the magician and try to figure it out but it's rather you know oh wow i get to try to do it myself you know so it's going to make them more willing to cooperate to suspend their disbelief a little bit more and to just relax and have fun the more relaxed the audience is the more willing they're going to be to just kind of chill and watch the show and enjoy it for what it is rather than sit there and try to pick your routine apart and figure out everything that you're doing. So anyways, those are my five tips, uh, advice for anyone that is just starting out. And again, if you've been doing magic already for a while and you notice that you're kind of doing some of these things, I suggest that you guys uh, try turning some of those things around because it's gonna make your performance so much easier. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe. Please check out the links in the description and watch all of those videos. I know I link a bunch of stuff in the description, but I want to give you guys as much value as possible. Anyway, my name is Michael O'Brien. Until next time, keep practicing.